guys, it's Lane. I am here this morning at the Universal Costume House. I am here with Poppy. Hi, I'm Poppy Cannon Reese. I manage the costume department on the Universal Studios lot. And uh, we're just showing you around here. Let's go. This used to be the tailor shop. They used to have 10 tailors working in here at a time. But the trend now is to set up a workroom wherever you go to shoot. So we just needed the space for specialty costumes. We call it the Asian medieval room. It's got pirates and knights and samurai helmets hanging from the rafters. But this was all the fantasy football for the craft commercial that we did was all stuff that we pulled in here. <laughs> Harley wore this when we did the Epic Meal Time pirate video. No buffet, no cruise ship, no cruise ship buffet is safe. Skyrim stuff are these night costumes that I used. And they're plastic as you can hear. <laughs> and even these chain metal things are plastic, so we're not having our actors run around in full-on metal. So these gray suits, they're from Oblivion. And I mean, you can even see that there's still tags on them of like which actor wore them and which duplicate, which uh, variation of how distressed it was, and the matching jackets. And so we use one of those in season three. Lieutenant, start the engine. Sir, I, I can't solve this equation. Do you know the variable? So basically everything on display is for rent and people will be like, I want the whole outfit. Yeah, we don't really buy any costumes because we get enough in. Like for example, Jurassic World was released and the week after it was released, it's like four truckloads of, <laughs> uh, of assets show up. So we call them costume assets and they come in by the truckload, usually from Universal Features. It's kind of like playing Tetris all day long. You're like, <laughs> oh, here's a truckload. <laughs> <laughs> This is like for the Prada shoes and the higher end stuff. And then this is the men's and the kids. How far back does the stock go? Well, there are pieces here from the Victorian era that are original. There's a lot of stuff here from the 40s and 50s. There's really a lot from the 80s and 90s, but there's everything. There's a range. Okay, now we're gonna go into the main stock area. So this is 27 aisles. Starts with contemporary in the front and works its way back. Maybe you could explain the process of how you come in in the morning and... You just have to have a game plan. You come in, you're like, I need scrubs. Come back here and go to the scrub section and, and you search for your size. So if you don't have a list, you'll be walking around aimlessly. But for a costume <laughs> designer, it's like knowing your own supermarket. You know, yes. you know where everything is, mm -hmm. you know, and you get to know it more. And we're only open to costume professionals. We're not open to the public. So, you know, they know that pretty much everyone in here knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So when we get up into here, we're into the 70s. So everything is by in chronological order by uh, decade. 70s, 80s, 90s. Well, I've only been here for four years. It's changed quite a bit. We've basically reorganized everything. I was like, this needs to be in chronological order. So we basically have moved everything in the entire building since I've been here and reorganized it. It's changed a lot in the last four years. Yeah. But it really needs to be functional because the, the faster um, content is created for less money, the faster everybody has to work and it just helps to make it like a really shoppable experience. So that was my goal was to take it to like a, like a Bloomingdale shopping experience where you yeah. go in, you know what you want, you can find it easily and you're in and out. Here's Wendell's prom jacket, guys. Could you fix this hole in my pocket? So many memories. I miss these characters. Season four. Just kidding. <laughs> I find the costume rental division to be a great asset to costume designers and um, anybody working in the costume field. It's really great to have this stuff available to rent. It makes it faster, it makes it cheaper and you can find things you could never find thrift store shopping and shopping. And most cities don't have this. Um, you know, even in New York, there's not a warehouse of this size where you can go in, in the morning and rent what you need and um, be out of there in a day. But mm -hmm. as a, I think as a designer, you need to be crafty and creative and you need to be able to put things together. Yeah. And um, it's great to be able to provide all those parts and pieces so you can put together great outfits and be really creative because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the object isn't to recreate what somebody's already done, it's to create a new look with yeah. what we have available here and we offer that to designers. Yeah, and some of the best costumes that I've done, it's, you know, pieces from a costume house, pieces from a thrift store, pieces from Target, so it is it's piecing all those things together and making it work for, for your show. So the more creative you are, I think the easier it is to get work and find jobs. You know, you have to make the connections, you have to constantly mm -hmm. be looking for work, but the more creative you can be with sketching and 
building and sewing and putting things together, mm -hmm. you know, the easier it is to be con continuously working as yeah. a designer. Yeah, and you got to get real crafty sometimes with your budget too. So yeah. some of my best work was when they changed the schedule and what I thought I had a month to make, I have a weekend to make. So like Johanna's dress in season three, that schedule changed and I had a weekend to construct that skirt. And it's one of my favorite ones now. So. I don't know if you guys remember this because it was a very quick scene. But when Freddie had his flashback as Guitar Hero in when he was doing his video will, he had this lovely shirt on. So he he wasn't a big fan of it because it, I guess itches. But he looked so good. It was Freddie in his Guitar Hero glory days. Come on, what else would you put him in? For when people are ready to get their stuff written up for something, they come up here. Um, it's barcoded. We have over 480 thousand pieces in the warehouse <laughs> so about 80 percent of it's barcoded the shoes and the hats we can't barcode so those are photographed as they go and stuff like that so joey do you remember these yes joey had little snap-on ruffles for his prom costume in season three and he loved them oh my god and he there's kept so there's so many they come in every color i still don't believe that these just button on yeah i can't believe this has existed yep for, for people like you, so. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to class it up a little bit, just mm -hmm. slap on some ruffles. Yep. Oh, look at Cherish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming over to the Universal Costume House, you guys. This was a lot of fun. I hope you learned some stuff, but I've got more shopping to do, and then I've got to go do fittings with Freddie, so I'll see you guys later.